listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm Bree. And I'm Rachel. Oh boy, if you have just returned from Youth Gathering 2022, raise your hand, although we won't be able to see you. I was uh, able to go this year for KFUO Radio. You might be able to hear in my voice, it's kind of not there anymore because I spent three or four days just like talking to thousands upon thousands of youth. That's your favorite thing. It actually was super fun. (laughs) There was a little bit of an introvert learning curve as there always is with an event like this. (laughs) But it was super fun. And we actually have one of those youth today joining us in just a little bit to tell us about her experiences. Super awesome and great to have somebody else who was there uh, as an actual participant and not as an exhibitor (laughs) to share some experiences about what this gathering is like. And for the three of you, have any of you ever gone to a gathering? I never did. We moved a lot when I was in high school and it never quite managed to line up. But my husband did, and he really enjoyed it. So I always kind of wished I had gone because I had friends who told me all about it, and it sounded really, really awesome. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of in a similar boat. Like, we moved the the summer that it happened, and then I think we were moving again, like, three years later. So it just mm. it never it never lined up for me either. My husband has been to at least, was a, an attendee at at least one, and he actually was out, um, out. He was down in Houston this last week with his vicarage congregation. So they had a good time. Nice. And I I, I saw the kids, but I didn't see him. (laughs) (laughs) And I didn't get to go as a high school participant, but I have been as an adult. All right. So, Rachel, it's spoiler alert. It's your daughter we're talking (laughs) to. It is. Yeah. Do you, as a parent, what is this experience like? Why did you choose to have your daughter go? All of those things. What are your thoughts on all this, too? Well, I think I would have tried to make it possible for her to go. My my daughter and my son both went. And I would have tried to make it possible for them to go in any event, because I think it's a it's a wonderful thing to bring Lutheran youth together so that they can see that they are not alone in this world. Mm. That there's a whole whole big mess of them and that even if it feels like there aren't a whole lot of people who share their beliefs and their confession, that there really are. And it just Mm -hmm. takes a little bit to bring them all together sometimes. So I think it's a really valuable experience that way. But especially after the COVID experience Mm -hmm. that we've had, where I think for a lot of churches, youth group has been pretty much non-existent Mm -hmm. for the last several years. And so, you know, my teenagers, they haven't really had the traditional youth group kinds of experiences lately that I think are so important in building those nurturing communities of faith among young people. So that I felt really strongly about. But also, I was so pleased to see how all the youth gathering preparation really helped our church jumpstart youth group again. (laughs) But it gave us a reason. It gave us just a point to everything where getting together for pre-gathering Bible studies and fundraisers, it was a whole lot of firsts that they hadn't done in, you know, three years. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, talent night fundraisers and car washes and all the, all the full gamut of like wonderful get together experiences, including Bible study. Those happened when they might have been a little bit slower in coming back had the youth gathering not been on the calendar. So I was really, really grateful that they could they could be part of that experience, both the time in Houston, but also the time before. Yeah, let me tell you, having 22,000 people gathered in the same place who you know believe the same things you do is a pretty mind-blowing experience. It's pretty awesome. Shall we bring the youth in? Yes, we shall. The, <laughs> the average age... Of the lounge is going to go down by a few years because I'm going to actually duck out <laughs> so Ella can use my my microphone. So I, I wish you all a wonderful conversation and I will talk to you again in a few minutes. Happy Here year. is the younger version of Rachel. <laughs> Sweet Ella. Here you go. Basically. Welcome to the lounge. Hi, Ella. What's up, girl? Uh, not much. Somebody oh else. <laughs> <laughs> Have you recovered yet from 
everything. <laughs> uh, not fully. Still exhausted. Mm -hmm. I'm having a little trouble sleeping at night, probably because I'm lacking all of the excitement that came before. <laughs> You're but, not sleeping um, off the overstimulation or anything. No, that's not it. Nah, it was it was fun. Uh, very tiring, actually. Yeah. So in full disclosure, we are recording this, what, two days after after you've gotten home? So just about. Yeah. So the high hasn't quite worn off yet. Nope. Wow. <laughs> okay. So I want to know, what was your first experience? What was your first impression when you get on the ground in Houston? And Wait, first, I want to know, how did, how did you get there? Because I feel like the travel oh, is a key part yes. of the experience. We went by airplane. Oh, okay. Which okay. is kind of a necessity since it would be like a three day drive mm -hmm. through Appalachia. Mm -hmm. Okay. There from where we are. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. That's, not that's that it couldn't be done. It was just impractical. And I feel like a lot of people did not have experience in long car trips. Mm -hmm. so oh. Crushed in a car with other people. Did you go yeah. with a big group or was it just a smaller group or was it just you and your bro? Mm -hmm. uh, it was a moderately sized group. We ended up with 15 in total. Wow. 11 okay. kids and four adults. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, That's not bad. I think our yeah. mom was the only mom that didn't come. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but she had a reason. Whoa, whoa, whoa. She had two lovely little daughters to take care of at home yeah. while my dad worked. So it just, it couldn't work, unfortunately. Just doing the mom thing. You're like, oh, darn, my mom. All the other moms, those were all their kids. They were all teenagers. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay, now Sarah's question. Okay, so you got there by plane, and we actually flew through the same airport because I saw you on the way back, too. I did. First impression, when you land in Houston, how did you guys get to, did you have a, a shuttle? What was what was that experience like? Because I know ground transportation is a whole, it's a whole other experience too just getting from the airport to where you're going with that many people it was a bus i've rode in a bus before it was a very exciting. fancy bus actually <laughs> oh shuttle like I, <laughs> the, the youth group they rented a limousine company to oh. hire out their buses and they were big beautiful buses with charging ports inside and seat buckles wow. which none of us ever ended up using you, you don't wear buckles on the bus no you no. don't you don't mm -mm. Man, charging ports, that is like, that's yeah. riding in style. And the and the chairs had like, they had armrests and head cushions. Like, uh -huh. these were not your average school buses. No. <laughs> or public <laughs> transportation buses. No. Absolutely. No. They were the good buses. The good Some plush riding in style. Very nice. Okay, so then where was your hotel, like, close to the gathering? Because I know when this happens, when a youth gathering comes to a city, they kind of just like take over the entire city and all of the hotels and I know some people got to be super close like right across the street and some people were super far away and had to be shuttled in so where where did your group end up in all of that uh we were decently far enough away mm -hmm. if any of the youth gathering kids are listening group two shuttle route yeah <laughs> <laughs> hashtag group two <laughs> <laughs> Do you have like a new a new crew of friends now? Was it the same shuttle route every time you guys had to go to and from the it convention was, center? It was the same shuttle route pretty much. Mm -hmm. uh, we were not the first stop. We were like mm. two or three, I think. It was mm -hmm. a 15 minute ride, though. It was not a short ride. And a oh, friendship yeah. forged in mass transit. That's <laughs> that's a movie right there. Uh, we, we were not the talkative group, though. So that is OK. That's there's still a story there. I know it. There is. It's true. Okay, it's actually, true. we did make friends with one group. Our last night at the stadium, because they had this giant stadium and it was like fireworks mm -hmm. and everything was great. There was this other group that was also writing a uh, group too. And they were they were the coolest group ever. Like there was <laughs> 20, 20 something of them. And they had all gotten together in a big circle. And my brother was a part of that circle for whatever reason. And they they were listing out things they liked, and then they would yell it out. So someone would say, Carl, and everyone else would say, Carl! <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And, and, and then someone oh, else would say, her. Romeo and Juliet! And, so, and everyone else would chant, Romeo and Juliet! <laughs> I can't tell where you lost your voice from either. <laughs> I don't know. I'm still, I'm, I'm still mystified. <laughs> 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 
All right. So you had this uh, amazing shuttle ride. And when did you actually get to the convention center? Was that, what day would that have been? Friday? Saturday? I think Saturday it was the day after we arrived. We uh, left on Friday. So we would have gotten there. We would have actually arrived there Saturday. And well, we were we were surprised by how much cool stuff there was to do. Mm. Oh. There were several blow up stuff. Uh, there was this bouncy castle race course. I still yes. have a rug burn from that on my elbow. Yes. <laughs> but it was it was fun. There was also like this sort of sweeper arm. Have you ever seen Wipeout? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it, it, it was like that. It was a sweeper thing, except, you know, you can get right back on if you fall off. It's actually decently hard. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a bouncy castle. So you can't really uh, yeah. jump over it really high. Mm-hmm. Do you have a mechanical bull? Was there a mechanical bull? There was no mechanical bull, Dang but there was it. a virtual reality Beat Saber. So that was fun. What? what? I don't know what that so, is. So uh, virtual no. reality, you know, you got the headset and the thingies. Yeah. But Beat Saber is this rhythm game. And oh. where, where basically you slice blocks in percussion time with the rhythm. Oh. And I feel like you would do a great job at this. Me? I, I, think I you Thank you. I mean, I you might. So. The only <laughs> song they had was three different versions of the theme song. Oh, oh, how exciting. <laughs> but it was still fun. Like, I, I, I never get to play in a virtual reality. Fast? It was fun. Probably varying levels of difficulty based on mm-hmm. uh, yeah. tempo. Yeah. yeah. You, you had like normal difficulty, then you had hard difficulty, then you had expert difficulty. Mm. I oh. tried expert oh. difficulty. Uh, it, it, it was, wow. Mm. <laughs> it was okay. something. Okay. So, because t- because I've never been, tell me a little bit, and I I know bits and pieces from what I hear around me is, tell me a little bit about like the conference hall, like the conference center, what kind of stuff goes on there, in addition to some of these fun type activities. But then I also know you guys are at Minute Maid Stadium for like concerts and what like. So tell me about the other stuff that goes on in the conference center. And then let's walk it across the street to Minute Maid Stadium. Is Minute Maid Stadium? Minute Maid Park. Yeah. Minute Maid Park. Sure. Sure. <laughs> so the conference halls, there were, well, there were a whole lot of different sort of lecture type things you could go to. Mm-hmm. I went to two that I remember. The first one. It was a class about making decisions. Cool. Oh. How, how to make how to make decisions when you're stuck. You you don't know which way to go. Huh. And it it was pretty insightful actually. Basically, there are a couple different options. You can make a list of possible outcomes depending on okay. which ones you take, pros and cons and stuff. Or you can you know ask a couple friends their opinions on what you should do. Like don't ask your entire neighborhood, but just a couple <laughs> right. of close confidants. <laughs> The creepy guy who lives up the street. Don't ask. He doesn't. His opinion is not. Or, you know, the guy with the white van in the driveway. Exactly. <laughs> Discretion in who you speak with. That's of course. Thing. In all things. Hey, there you Hi-yo! go. Bing <laughs> bong. Uh, see, it's for funny because that was, that, a, that was the slogan yeah. for the youth gathering. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes, it was. <laughs> so what was the other, what was the other session you went to that you remember you said to do did you forget it already no i did not forget it uh okay it, i wasn't sure to put it carefully it it was how to have a healthy relationship okay okay huh. my friends and okay. i all called it a uh, sex ed light uh, oh uh, okay juicy okay. <laughs> juicy very good uh <laughs> you know it was telling you all the usual stuff be careful who you date wait until marriage you know all that good law-abiding stuff Sure. <laughs> so it's a good reminder to have every now and again, right? Were you able to toss out the term chaste or oh. chastity at all? Your mom said uh, she was going to be using that term a lot from now on. Yes. Yeah. No, I can tell by your face. You <laughs> your face. <That's> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Chastitizzy, as we like to say. I have not heard her use that. Ever. Oh, She's boy. Up for it Accountability then. much? I've told you. I've told you. Now you when she does, you'll be like, oh yeah, okay, mom. So were there I like that was gonna happen. So were there were the exhibitors in the cause? I know obviously Sarah as an exhibitor. I know that Synod the International Center was there. I know mm-hmm. that Office of International yep. Mission had representation yep. there. Yep. Were there a lot of exhibitors that were there? And like what were the kinds of things that they were promoting? Yeah, actually. You see, there was a lot of college promotion because, you know, mm-hmm. it's it's a healthy audience of 
20,000 something kids mm -hmm. uh, in high school. So, you know, that's kind of your target audience. Yep, yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, we had shirts sponsored by the colleges. We had bucket hats sponsored by the colleges. Those are really popular. A lot of people want to wear one and I don't know if I like it. <laughs> Uh, bucket hat was from CU Chicago, by the way. Uh, also, there was one from Irving. <laughs> Aha, yes. They ran out of those super quick because they only had like 100 a day or something. Hmm. Oh. Uh, well, they also had a ball pit, so that was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Wasn't there axe throwing over there, too, there or was. something? There was. Yeah. It's Blow up axe throwing. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. No. These are the real axes. This is what you signed Wait. in your waiver, remember? You signed <laughs> that was real axes. No, no, there weren't real axes. <laughs> but this is why you read the fine print so your child can go and throw axes at people. That's right. <laughs> Man, I need to go Hilarious. to this. Yeah. Darn yeah. It. Just, just wanted to frighten the moms for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got sessions. We've got exhibitors. I'm sure we get sh like free swag. I mean, that's what oh, a conference. So much free swag. All a professional swag, yeah. conference. That's why I go to those. Mm -hmm. But then there yep. were a whole bunch of activities at Minute Maid. What was what kind of went on over there, and how close was it to the conference center? I I, I would have said it was if I were to guess about an eighth or a quarter of a mile walk there, okay. so not okay. too long, not too far. It was like mm -hmm. uh, it was like two blocks. Yeah, okay. it wasn't too bad. Okay. Thing is, it feels very very long when it's hot and it's humid. Yes. It was like over a hundred every day. Ooh, it was. <laughs> it was so hot. Like you stepped outside, you were guaranteed yeah. to sweat if you were out there for longer than a minute. Okay, yep. so on a scale of St. Louis summer humidity to ninth circle of hell humidity, like where is Houston on that? Is it between? Somewhere is it in, in between Sahara and Australia? Yeah. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, definitely worse than St. Louis. Worse okay, than St. Louis. That's really, what I was. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, they they also had an extreme heat advisory, and oh, their extreme yes. heat advisory doesn't start until like ten degrees hotter than ours does. So. Yeah. No. When uh, no. <laughs> when we went to our servant event, uh, we had to work outside in the heat, mm. and they had to stop every twenty minutes for a mandatory water break in the shade. Wow. I love what that. did oh you goodness. do for a servant event? Yeah. Like, what that was, was my that? next question? Yeah. We went to a church, which was building like a park to walk around in. Oh, and that's cool. our job was to paint the sheds and the like shipping containers because they had some of those green. Hmm. So, oh. you know, they would not stick out as much because they had been brown and reddish brown, respectively. Hmm. Cool. It was it was fun. I love painting. I'm just glad that I wasn't part of the group that had to hammer the path down. Because mm. that was that looked hard. I can't handle. Yeah, it. I would have free water and Gatorade out of it, so I'm happy. Nice. Hey, there you go. Okay, back to Minute Maid Park. What was your first night experience? Because it was kind of um, uh, over the top. <laughs> first night experience. All right. So picture yourself. You're 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 a little girl, right? Not little girl, I guess. Uh, imagine yourself back into your teenage years. You know, you're yeah, not yet a woman. You're, uh, you're tired because you just got out of a big trip and you're in a new place you've never been in before with a whole lot of strange people on any side of you. Then imagine they turn up the bass on the music so much that you can feel it pounding in your chest. Mm -hmm. Like ev every drum beat was just like boom, bada boom. You know. Then imagine that you've already got moderate anxiety. Mm. And you have the perfect storm to create a few panic attacks. That was mm -hmm. my experience the first night. Thankfully, it got so much better after that because I know it was oh, actually going right. on. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I was, actually, you're not the only one that I've heard was like, it was super sensory overload super for some, for some mm -hmm. people yeah. attending. So it, it didn't help that we're also the group that had been inside for two years, not going to concerts, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, really doing, not being in groups larger than ten or twelve, excluding family mm -hmm. members, mm -hmm. not really interacting with strangers because you know we're told from a young age don't talk to strangers, yep. stranger <laughs> danger, and all that, and right. then like, suddenly you're thrust into this overstimulating environment, mm -hmm. like you're expected to like That's it. Mm -hmm. right, yeah, right. But uh, I, I did end up liking it in the end. Cool. It was just new and different and unfamiliar. Well, and I believe they accommodated sort of those the, those who were very sensitive to light and sound. Maybe there was a room or maybe a set of rooms in the stadium that I had heard about. Maybe I was there not were rooms in the 
There were rooms in the convention center. There were sensory rooms. Okay. Yeah. I don't think there was anything in the park. No, nothing in the park. You were on your own for that. It, yeah. Well, and you were only in the park for, what, two or three hours every night. It wasn't It wasn't the all-day thing that you were in the convention center right, for. Right. No, but see, I would argue that there was way more sensory overload in total in the park than there was oh, yeah. in the convention yep. center. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I would agree with you on that one. There were fireworks the first night, weren't oh, there? Oh, the fireworks? Those are great. I love fireworks, mm-hmm. which honestly sounds kind of ironic given everything that I've just said. <laughs> Light colors, <laughs> loud sounds. But you're familiar with them, right? I'm yeah. familiar with them. I've been going to yeah. fireworks shows since I was a toddler. Those are things are fun. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Those are fun. Those fireworks, fun fact, were happening right over my head in my Airbnb, <laughs> which was a little terrifying until I realized what was happening. So I was standing at the window of my Airbnb watching the live stream on my phone and watching them happen right outside my window. It was interesting. I don't think that Houston is like Chicago or Detroit where you got to wonder, was it a gun or was it a firework? Well, I I was wondering that. For about about 30 seconds, I was like, what is happening right now? (laughs) Until I saw the color and I was like, okay, it's just fireworks. We're fine. Yeah. (laughs) They, they were some okay, so fireworks. They were. Let's talk about these mass events that happened every night. What was your experience with those? I know the first night was a bit overwhelming, and I totally get it. It was it was a lot happening that first night. What happened uh, the other nights? What what were the things that you were doing and learning and experiencing during those mass events? It was somewhat of a cross between like a sort of concert, you know, the type where it's it's live music stuff because they had a praise band up there. Mm-hmm. I would have liked it just a little bit better if I knew a lot of the songs. Yeah. Yeah. I did not know half of them. Mm-hmm. We, we do not go to the praise service in our church. Right. Yeah. But the half that I did know, I did sing. Those yes. were great. Yeah. Uh, and then the other half was sort of like a Bible lesson thing. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of the Bible lessons seemed pretty open-ended because they would do skits for them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. But... My favorite skit by far was the Romeo and Juliet one because, <laughs> oh man. That one was funny. Give me a minute. See, we were not supposed to be rooting for Romeo and Juliet. They each claimed, <laughs> they each made their own version of the script. And it was supposed to be a lesson in how you don't change a masterpiece like, say, Shakespeare or the Bible. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. But see, Romeo and Juliet raised some actually actually their concerns <laughs> they had points is what i'm talking about mm-hmm. and they were not expecting the entire auditorium to be like romeo romeo <laughs> like the entire auditorium twenty thousand children teenagers <laughs> even adults just chanting we were not just expecting of romeo <laughs> That was uh-huh. hilarious. Like ev- <laughs> everyone, like Juliet got a lot of cheers too because she was like, "Healthy relationships, people. Yeah. You don't marry someone you've oh, known after three no. days." And Romeo was like, "Yo, guys, let's just straight up turn this into an action movie." <laughs> and then everyone was like, "Yeah, action movie." <laughs> oh, brother! We were supposed to be on the director's side, but it's hard to be on the director's side because first off. She cast disinterested and rebellious people in the main roles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, as a director, that's one of the things you do not do. Okay. Mm-hmm. And another thing is that she didn't even bother hearing them out. Mm-hmm. Like, she could have just politely listened and said, oh, no, I, I don't think that's, that's not what we're doing right now. And then she tried to stop one of, your, one of the leads from leaving out of protest, mm. which, again... If your actor or actress threatens to walk out on you and they're in the lead role, you're in a bit of a pickle. <laughs> it was really hard to sympathize or even empathize with the director, unfortunately. Was this for real, for real happening or this is part of the skit? Uh, see, it was supposed to be part of the skit. Okay. It, the, it was, the skit was like they were turning against the director and everything and presenting their own versions of the thing. Hmm. But okay. we weren't supposed to root for the rebellion. <laughs> of but, course the group of teenagers is gonna root for the rebellion though right Who here's the thing it? romeo and juliet is the first shakespeare play you ever do in high school it's true. everyone mm-hmm. knew the story yeah. back to front and upside down and everyone agrees that that is an incredibly unhealthy relationship in teenage Correct. life sucks right true. <laughs> yeah. so does the boz lerman version of romeo plus juliet the movie speaking of sucks <laughs> And then everyone misinterprets it as this heartfelt story of star-crossed lovers. That was not the intention. 
Nope. <laughs> the intention was to warn parents to keep an eye on their children <laughs> so they don't end up accidentally murdering each other. Correct. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, hey, when that happens. Yeah. That's and Jesus, so hey, when you're going out, you meet a cute guy, and then you're like, oops, let me just poison myself. Right. <laughs> uh, so was there was there a mass event every every day, every night? Uh, every was night, yes. Every night. Okay. Okay. And you guys uh, have like church services too, right? Now, see, here's the thing. They were kind of, mm-hmm. it was, like I said, there were lessons in there. It was kind of a mix between concert and worship service. Mm-hmm. Okay. I got mm-hmm. you. And but then you the last like the Holy Communion one night, right? Oh yeah, uh, last morning there actually, before everyone got <laughs> on the airplanes, they had this communion event, and it took a good twenty minutes to get everyone communed. That's awesome. which is impressive That's with twenty thousand people. That is impressive. That's a thousand people a minute. Yeah. yeah, it was a production. I got to help out with Alter Guild this year. Oh. It was a production on the back end to make sure that every station had the elements and uh-huh. extra flagons because things break mm-hmm. and refill stations and the pastors knew what they were doing and they knew what to do at the end like mm-hmm. it was it was a whole mm-hmm. thing you know when covid <laughs> happened and the meme came out of the pastor like dousing the baby with the super soaker and it was like long distance mm-hmm. baptism well now i'm just like they should have just super soakered wine into people's mouths like you're at uh, Benny Hanna and like slingshot. Never that mind. is incredibly That's, sacrilegious. Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> In it, all I'm fairness, not, I feel like the teenage boys will have found it hilarious. I am not, well, yeah, that I'm not disputing either. <laughs> it would be sacrilegious, though. Uh, I would not endorse this. No, no, that would be a hard pass. To be clear, I do also do not endorse yeah. it, but it popped into my brain. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm the exact so, same way. I get it. Right. It's knowing the difference that's important. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so what was the what was the divine service like that Wednesday morning for you? Uh I was very, very tired that morning and was so kind of just I'm not proud of it, but I was sort of sitting out of it. You know, mm-hmm. I was <laughs> The lack of sleep was really getting to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What time did you? Okay, hang on. Pause a moment. What time did you usually get back to your room, oh. ready to go to bed mm. each in night? In between yeah. twelve and one in the morning. Whoa. And then the yeah, buses came so. at eight, so we had no. to, so we had to be ready by seven thirty. Oh, so of course, okay. every, and yeah. breakfast started at seven o'clock. Yeah. That's so rude. So you had to be up by six. Right. Oh, so you're yeah, that's, running that's... really low on sleep. Well, and what is it? Was it five days? Four days? Four five days. days? Four days. Stri- I mean, that's ten days. I don't. That's a whole. Okay. So you're, I don't. You're yeah. And then the last morning, really tired, exhausted. Mm-hmm. And what with that and all the physical exercise we were getting of mm-hmm. walking around everything and participating in all the games, everyone was dead tired in my troop, and we still had about. I want to say eight to 12 hours of travel left to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exhausted just thinking about it. We were exhausted. We were sore. We were just, they did not seem to think that teenagers needed sleep. Mm. (laughs) Build time in for naps. Do you hear that? Yeah, next time just have like after 12 o'clock Bible study, have a place that's quiet and open for nap time if anyone needs Mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the, I know the LCMS area had those bean bags, and I'm pretty sure there were a lot of kids napping over there for yeah, several the days. Yeah, the Lutherans <laughs> for Life area had bean bags, and mm. I, I actually found a couple people asleep there. Uh, the hammocks were always taken by the end. Uh, oh, yeah. The grassy area with the lawn chairs, those were mm-hmm. always full. Yep. Like, everyone was taking every chance to sit and rest that they could. Mm, yeah. yeah. It, it was honestly exhausting. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> So we mentioned the theme in passing in all things. Can you tell us what you were able to learn about that? Because I know that was coming up in, obviously, in the mass events. It was coming up in all the Bible studies. I'm sure it was coming up in the sessions. What kind of stuff did you learn about this theme for this year in all things? Uh, The whole point of it was that God is in everything. I mean, he made the world. He, He would, in fact, be in everything, kind of like a little signature. Okay. Uh, but that wasn't the main takeaway that I got. See, uh, another part of it that that was that God can use you even if you're what the world would consider broken. Mm. Like mm. they mentioned depression and anxiety a lot, 
bullying, mm-hmm. poverty, you know, all that, all that stuff that's really honestly nasty. And mm-hmm. they were like, despite all this, even if you doubt, God can still use you. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I had no idea how much I needed to hear that, mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. we, we live in a world right now where I feel very guilty about accidentally passing on a disease. Mm-hmm. I feel that too. But that's yeah, not really a hindrance in God's plans and yeah. the scheme of mm-hmm. things because, you know, there's always a plan. Sometimes you just don't mm-hmm. see it. So then with that theme, with all of the stuff that you were learning, how do you how do you see this like being reassuring, building up your faith, helping you in that journey that, that you're on in the church? Well, first off, it was nice to just have everyone gathered in one place and just mm-hmm. as soon as the theme song hit, for the last time like the entire room sort of woke up and was you know singing along and it was it was a great energy you know it's just if you can get a whole bunch of teenagers in the same place rooting for the same thing it's it's powerful you know Mm -hmm. oh man it's it's like the final theme song every everyone sort of you know they had been sort of they were in church mode if you know what i mean they were you know quiet calm respectful all that things Mm -hmm. And then the theme song popped up. Everyone jumped up. All the reference was gone. They were just there to jam. Yes. Jam on, jammers. Yeah. Big finish. It, 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 was, it was quite the finale. Mm-hmm. So, you know, all that, the camaraderie was there. I, li- I liked that. Even though mm-hmm. I never met these people, there was this one thing that sort of bound us together. Mm-hmm. What was the question again? How was this kind of a formative experience for you? Well... It taught me a few things. The first thing is that even when it doesn't feel like it, there's always someone there who can, who comes from the similar background as you, who can help you if you're struggling, if you just ask for it, you know? Mm -hmm. Another thing I learned is that you need to find people with good chemistry on stage. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not going to name names, but if you were there, you would have (laughs) known. The last thing is, well, not the last thing, second to last thing is that a powerful speaker, a, a person who can speak real well, can move a lot of people into a similar direction. Mm-hmm. That's always a good thing to have on your side. Mm-hmm. And there were a lot of good speakers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the final thing is that teenagers need sleep or, you know, <laughs> they need sleep. They need a uh, good, nutritious food. Mm. <laughs> a single slice of pizza was nine dollars. Nine dollars. Oh, my goodness. What? What? If you're sending money with your kids, please send like 20 or $30 more than you think they're going to spend because <laughs> that's probably just going to go into food alone. <laughs> Do you recommend for those who are listening when the next youth gathering comes around, what do you think? If they have youth, should they send their youth to participate? Is it- uh, I think they should. Yeah. Yes, you can learn a lot of good things, uh-huh. but uh, you might want to send them something caffeinated. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I had barely anything caffeinated to drink, and I was regretting it sorely. <laughs> uh, send them maybe with a couple snacks because they're not going to get enough to eat if you don't send them with any food. Uh-huh. Maybe a box of bandages in the, in case they get like some kind of rug oh, burn. Yeah, yeah. Maybe some cough drops in case they pick anything up because you know it's a bunch of people from all over the place meeting. Of course, things might get a little. Jeremy. A little Jeremy. <laughs> there were a lot of high fives that went around, especially in the last Whoa. two days. Yeah. And, and you know the, how, what they say about that. They're like, oh, no, you should fist bump or something instead or like bump elbows. Nope. High fives. Full hand high fives. Full open yep. hand mm. high like, fives. No shame high fives. Like kind of high fives. <laughs> Look at my elbow. Snap. Oh, and uh, shout out to the volunteers. They were really nice. Also, shout out to Carl. <laughs> Carl! Carl! Who is Carl? <laughs> who is Carl? <laughs> okay, so he was this guy who just has the most mundane answers to everything. Oh, that's awesome. You don't need to be like, you don't need to be crazy or something to get teenagers to like you. You just have to be like, he was normal, but painfully so. Mm-hmm. Like, so they asked like, him what his favorite food was, and he, he would say something like toast or cornflakes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Corn. Flakes. He's like Trent's. Alter oh, ego or like his yes n- arch nemesis. His anyway, nephew. he basically arch nemesis. <laughs> everyone liked him so much that they gave him 
a contract to sign for the next 10 youth gatherings. <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> or at least that's what they said at the end. I just so it's going to be a scary face. 30 years from now, Carl is still going strong. Well, of course. <laughs> He's got to renew his contract eventually. Eventually he'll, just be like, just, eventually, he'll be just like a, an old guy in a, in a button-up shirt, just sort of walking on stage and being like, I like to mow my lawn on the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> Carl is Trent's son, and the reason he's so different is he's fighting generational trauma. That's my mm. fan theory. <laughs> Could be. Could be. Oh my goodness. Anyway, shout out to Carl and whoever brought the Shrek flag. (laughs) Oh came and brought a Shrek flag. Nice. And they were just waving it like it was their banner. It was it was the thing that, you know, how some people, Mm -hmm. subgroups, the big ones, have like these things they hold up so their group can find them. Yep. Uh, Yep. There were some really interesting things. There were giant faces of their pastors. That was a more common one. But then this Mm -hmm. one group, they brought a Shrek flag. It was a legit That's flag. Hilarious. It was waving behind them when they walked. And whenever it went by, everyone yelled, Shrek! Maybe their pastor was Shrek. Did you ever think about that? I'm not sure if Shrek is ordained. Oh. <laughs> Maybe he might be an team. elder. Hmm. He might be the one cool elder that they all like. Hmm. Could be. Could be. <laughs> Do you have any other final thoughts, experiences, anything you loved? Anything else you want to tell us? Uh, anything else I want to tell you? This is mostly to the audience because I'm not sure if any of you have children, but make your kids come to church. We need more people in our youth groups. I'm not kidding. They're sparse. Mm -hmm. That's a serious note for sure. Amen to that. It's very good. Yes. A good wisdom. I don't care if they feel, I don't care if their excuse is if they're sick, like put a hand (laughs) to their forehead and bring out a thermometer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they're not sick, make them go. Straight from the mouth of Ella. That's right. I am a teenager. Take your kids to youth group. <laughs> I, I have been forced to go to church my entire life. And she's <laughs> turning out okay, quarter, guys. Yeah. She's turning out fine. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, I'm fine. Yeah. Totally fine. What, 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 why would you think I'm over this? Ellie, you are hilarious. I, Thank you so much for joining us. It this was, was a pleasure. super fun. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> All right. Here comes my mom back out again. Bye. Okay. Bye. Rachel, hey, you're Annie. king. Greatest. I was hilarious. <laughs> you got a good girl. Thanks. I like her. I think That's we'll true. keep her. Uh-huh. You should keep her, definitely. Definitely keep her. If you mm. all, if any of you guys went to the youth gathering or if your youth went to the youth gathering, we would love to hear about it. Yes, we would love to hear about it. I know lots of you got the whole KFUO Radio Lutheran Ladies Lounge spiel if you stopped by the booth and talked with me. I made sure you knew about Ladies Lounge. So we would love to hear your stories. If you went to the youth gathering, if you've been to any youth gatherings and you want to share those stories with us, join our group on Facebook, the Lutheran Ladies Lounge on Facebook. You can also follow us on Instagram at Lutheran Ladies Lounge. If you're not on social and you want to get Lutheran Ladies Lounge in your inbox, you can find out how to do that in our show notes. Or you can send an email to lutheranladies at kfuo.org. You can find all of our podcasts at kfuo.org slash lutheranladieslounge or on your favorite podcasting app, including Spotify for all you young folks that are um, all over the place on Spotify or on the KFUO radio app. You're listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Aaron. I'm Bree. And I'm Ella's mom. <laughs> Ella's mom. Views and opinions expressed on the Lutheran Ladies' Lounge podcast may not represent the official position of the management or ownership of KFUO Radio, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. The Lutheran Ladies' Lounge is produced by KFUO Radio and available at kfuo.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Join our community on Facebook in the Lutheran Ladies' Lounge.